If you look at enough spreadsheets in finance, I promise eventually you'll run into this pattern, the norm s inv that uses the rand function. This is the inverse transform method that I like to illustrate. So I'd like to illustrate the inverse transform method, which is a pretty fancy term for a simple idea of applying the cumulative distribution function that I defined in the previous video. And we see this inverse transform method in the Monte Carlo simulation, where, for example, the price of a stock today might be $10. And then we want to simulate, generate several simulations, maybe thousands of simulations of that stock price going forward in time. So what will it be tomorrow? And what will it be the day after that? And in order to do that, we need a random number generator, of course, but we also have the key feature of the Monte Carlo simulation is the distributional assumption. So for example, classically, we might assume geometric Brownian motion. That's the same assumption that goes into Black Scholes Merton, where the log returns are approximately normal. I'm going to do a mu and a sigma there. And so we the key feature of the Monte Carlo simulation is our assumption about the distribution of the returns, but we need a way to randomize that. So that's what the inverse transform method does. And so here I have the standard normal, and in green, I have the probability density function. That's the PDF of the standard normal. I did uh, define that in the previous video as well. And we know that, uh, well, uh, exam finance exam candidates oftentimes memorize some of these quantiles. So some of you may already know that, for example, uh, one corresponds to about 84%. And so that means that if this standard normal characterizes the random variable, then there is an 84% chance that it's less than one. Or in other words, the area under this curve is equal to 84%. It's actually the area under the curve. We don't even need to divide by the whole area because it's this is a probability distribution and the whole area by definition is 100%. That's by definition of being a probability distribution. So. 84% corresponds to a 1, and that is the meaning of the cumulative distribution function. As I mentioned in that previous video, key mathematical idea is we integrate the PDF. The, the integral or antiderivative of the PDF is the CDF, and the CDF is just a direct function of that cumulative probability. So at 1, it's the 84% right, it's 84% is returned by the cumulative distribution function is equal to the area under the curve of the PDF. So we use the standard normal CDF then, or that knowledge about the CDF to, to conduct the inverse transform method. So I have this model here, and as usual, I'll share the link, and then I'm just going to randomize here the p-value with the Excel function, uh, rand, which returns for us a random uniform variable. That's between zero and one. I get 18%, let me do another one. Okay, I get 71.5%. Uh, so that's the first thing I would say here about this plot is that what we have on the y-axis is the probability right? It's from zero to one. And in my first or my third trial here, I got a probability of 71.5%. My inverse transform method will now convert that into a random standard normal. And to do that, all it does is run the inverse function, or specifically in this case, the inverse cumulative distribution function, specifically in this case, the inverse standard normal cumulative distribution function. But it's an inverse function, right? It accepts the probability of <clears throat> denoted by P and gives back for us the Z value. And the Z value is the name for the quantile if we're talking about a normal. So 71.5% is a probability. Visually here, you can see this goes over and intersects with the standard normal CDF at 0.567. That's why I've got this going down here. 
and then vertically at that point of intersection it hits down here at point at 0 0.567 that value right here so it's inverting the cumulative distribution function and so you can see we can go down here further through here vertically and what we're getting here is 71.5 percent is the area under the PDF to the left but what the purpose of this was was to take that random number generator which gave us a random uniform and convert it into a random standard normal in this case 0.567 and so further, the normal is elegant for several reasons, including that it's location scale invariant, meaning let's say I want my normal, my random normal variable va values to be normal, but not necessarily standard, standard normal. In other words, not necessarily with zero mean and uh, standard deviation of one. Instead, I want the mean to be 10 and the standard deviation to be 5. No problem because the normal is location scale invariant. So all I, can, all I do here is take the mean and add it to the standard deviation multiplied by my random standard normal. And in that case, right, I'm in the, each case here, I'm generating a random normal variable. So, in other words, I'll do one, let's do one more trial here and to walk through this probability, my uniform random is 62.4%. And then that get, corresponds to a random Z value of 0.317. So, 62.4% corresponds to 0.624. So I've transformed the random uniform into a random standard normal, and then I can uh, multiply and add or add and multiply to transform that into a random normal value with mean of 10 and variance of 5 squared, in this case 11.58. And so that's all the inverse transform method dud. Again, the key is that it's it, it performing this function, the inverse cumulative distribution function. And finally, just to show, just to highlight one more thing, and that is that I use the normal as usual, but any distribution will work. And that includes what I'm not showing, an empirical distribution. I'm just showing another parametric distribution here. Parametric means it can be expressed by a formula or function. So in this case, here, I'm assuming the, not the normal, but the log normal. Also continuous, but with significant uh, positive or skew right. You can see here's the PDF. And, but otherwise, it's the same. I generate a random uniform value. In this case, it's 82.5%. And then I utilize the inverse cumulative distribution function, or inverse CDS, to tell me what is the corresponding random uh, log normal value, and it'd be 3.695 here. So in other words, and if we go down further, the area under this curve to the left of that value is 82.5%. But similarly, it, we can uh, run several, whoops, many times. Okay. And I hope that was helpful. Thank you.